Okay guys, so I'm gonna give her a tutorial on a watercolor painting. And I figured a good place for us to start was with these pretty simple cards. They're pretty low maintenance, pretty quick to go by, and they have a pretty high reward because it's a little effort. Um, the star is what I think I'll go with first, and then I'll move over to the spheres. But as you can tell, well maybe you can't, but these are like I sketched it once, and then after I sketched it, uh, I took photocopy and then laid it down and colored the back with pencil and then just drew and it came out on the other card too. So that way these are reproducible. I'll use these as Christmas cards later. But yeah, there's that. And there's my logo. I have two colors, paintbrushes. Um, I'll probably be using a one uh, you could probably get away with um, something smaller than this. I have a zero. That would be nice too. Um, also have, like I said, artist loft. This is a one, uh, and it gets to a fine tip because whenever we are painting through these stripes that are over here, they're really small and skinny. Um, Two colors, paper towel. I have two cups of water, one that is clean, one that I will rinse my brush off in. And I'll try to do most of my color mixing on screen so that you can see that occur. So I know I said French ultramarine before, but this is ultramarine. They are practically the same color. So what I'm looking for is a cooler color, brown, you mix it. You see how it turns to like a cooler color? Mix some more blue, and now it's kind of gray, but it's like a darker gray. I want it to be a cooler gray. Kind of like that. So it's this cool gray instead of like a warmer color that you would get from the brown. And I'm going to come across and I am going to paint, I'm going to wash over to my, not quite to the edge, but close to the edge in water first, because you want, you want this to be wet on wet, what they would reference as wet on wet uh, in other watercolor videos. And what that looks like, okay, after that, I'm going to take my gray mixture. And I'm gonna come to my line and I am just gonna dab on some paint. I'm gonna follow my line all the way up and all the way back down. And that color is going to bleed across where you have wet your paper. That's fine, that's what we want to do. And I just want that shadow to carry out. Now, I'm going to pull some of this down because I want some contrast that happens here. So I'm going to pull two streaks of gray out. Pick up some of my clean water and my other one. And then I come over to this side. And I paint my wet area. Grab my gray paint. brush, grab some more water, come down to this area, paint my wet area, grab some of my gray paint, and then paint my line. Watercolor always it's always going to appear lighter on your 
paper. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Paint all the way down. In this corner. And then whenever it dries, it's nothing to panic about, but it is something to keep in mind that the colors that you put on will not be as saturated whenever you finish. So if you decided that you went white on your coloration, it's fine. You can come back and repaint that color back on. Um, a lot of people will actually use that as a, a technique for painting a higher end painting. So that's all I'm gonna do. Coming back to my color, I'm gonna take and see, this is not quite, like it's too orange in my opinion. It doesn't look brown enough. So I'm gonna take that color and I'm gonna mute it down a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. Color brown that's right here. That's the kind of brown I'm going for. So after that, I'm gonna get a little water, get that, and then I'm gonna come across and paint all of my stripes. Okay, and that's our underpainting. I'm going to gather up a little more of my color. And I'm gonna paint in my string. Easy enough. Now the string I know comes up and across. Okay. Some subtleties. I notice uh, like this all looks flat if I leave it the way that it is. But uh, this has some contrast like it's coming off the page slightly because it's puffy. So I'll, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a darker saturation of color, which just means less water, more pigment. I want it of brown, but I want it to be thicker. So that's perfect. And then I will wet my brush, pick up my pigment, come where I wetted my paper before, and start at the top. Now I notice that my pigment's not spreading as much, which means that my paper is dry. That's fine. I'll just come back and wet it back to it and pull the color out. Uh, next, I will pick up some of my pigment I notice that this side is in shadow. Anything that's in shadow like that will need to bleed out. Rinse that off. Come back with a little water. Same thing here. This on this side of the seam, it's going to be darker. I'm going to wet it. Grab some of my color push it to back into the painting. It'll have subtleties that play out like that all the way through it. That make it look <clears throat> puffy are those subtle nuances. Put on some water, grab some pigment, Dab it on. And it really is rinse, lather, repeat, just like that. Dab it on. Because you want that contrast to, to flow back and forth. Just like that. Uh, 
I will grab some more pigment. I'll notice that it is darker here. And I'll paint that in. See, that's way darker. And then I will come up here. This is in shadow. And blend it in. This stripe on this side. I'll pick up my paint and then I will dab it on. Grab some of my color and then do the same thing at the top. Doesn't look like much now, but it will in a minute. So I notice whenever I'm looking at my painting, it's starting to look more puffy, but on this side, I'm not quite so pleased with that. So I'm gonna come across, I'm gonna get some more color, water, sorry, and I'm gonna paint. I'm going to grab some color, I'm gonna start on one side and let it work its way up. And then I'm gonna do the same to the other side so that it gives it a more rounded figure whenever the two blend together. And we talked about uh, pigment and how watercolor kind of wants to do its own thing sometimes. So I am going to let that just be the way it is. I'm going to wet my stripe. I'm going to grab my color. And then I am going to touch one side and make it dark. Kind of bully that paint, push it up. Same thing here, bully the paint, only I'm going to push it down and they will bleed together, creating their own gradient. We'll paint it in with water. And then do the same thing. I'm going to touch this side with my pigment. And then this side with my pigment. And then I will let that bleed across to blend. I'm going to keep piddling. Okay. Gray mixture that I started this way. And then I'm going to 
come across like where I see this is starting to raise up off. I'm gonna paint that. This is starting to raise up off. I'm gonna paint that. I want it to appear like it's lifting off of the paper. Cause that's what's going, your eye will decide that this is 3D because of the shadow that's behind it. really want those colors to pop you come back and you repaint with a really uh, watery wash and you can take it one layer at a time until you get the darkness the depth that you're looking for so I'm going to come back across and I'm going to repaint uh, my colors with a really watered down form of the same color that I just painted with a uh, dark brown colored paint that I was shooting for earlier and I want it to be kind of saturated I'm gonna pick up my brush on the very tip and I'm gonna draw down like millimeters beside the prior stripe from corn from edge to edge and I'm gonna do that on both sides of the stripe. This will help make your painting look like it's a finished. Follow as closely as we can. And then whenever you're finished, somehow, after you've done all of that, it looks 3D, but they differ from each other, which in my opinion makes this a million times better.